Near the centre of the Milky Way, there are vast clouds of gas. For the first time ever, astronomers have identified a new organic molecule in this interstellar medium. This molecule could play a key role in the formation of amino acids, which are required for life to emerge. Let's examine this remarkable find. What makes this particular molecule special is its carbon-nitrogen double bond. This gives it a high reactivity. This becomes a fundamental constituent of the chemical chains that lead from the simplest and the most abundant molecules in space containing carbon and nitrogen, like formaldehyde and ammonia, to the more complex amino acids, which are the fundamental building blocks of biology. The region where these molecules were found is a system of clouds rich in molecular gas called the Central Molecular Zone. Prior to this, they had already identified complex organic molecules such as ethyl formate, isopropyl cyanide, and propylene oxide. These are all known as prebiotic molecules as they play a role in the formation of amino acids, RNA, and DNA, which are the building blocks of life itself. So why is it taking all this time to detect this molecule? Part of the problem is that in order to detect these chemicals, they need to identify the absorption and emission spectra of the light that passes through the cloud. Specific chemicals have a fingerprint that can be identified. The problem was that this molecule is very complex, so the spectra it can produce varies depending on its spin, speed and orientation. They were able to simulate these in the lab to create a blueprint of the signature that they should be looking for. And sure enough, as soon as they started to re-examine the light, they immediately identified the presence of this molecule. Let's examine the central molecular zone. It is a large region spanning the centre of the Milky Way, 600 parsecs across surrounding the centre of the Milky Way, where we find Sagittarius A. This region is very turbulent compared to the normal molecular clouds, around five times more turbulent. It is also significantly hotter compared to those further out in the disk, with temperatures ranging from 50,000 right up to 600,000 Kelvin. And this contains around 5% of the total molecular gas found throughout the Milky Way. This makes the density here almost two orders of magnitude higher compared to the normal molecular clouds. It is also thought that these regions are active star forming regions because of these conditions. The majority of the molecular clouds in the central area appear to lie on a twisted ring orbit with a radius of 100 parsecs and a period of a few million years. One unusual feature of this area is the fact that it is not symmetrical. The highest gas densities are found to the east of the centre of the galaxy. More star forming regions are found here and leads to the eastern side being far more active than the western side. The whole region is also tilted with respect to the galactic plane. From radio observations, we can also infer that there are large magnetic fields that present a picture of highly linear and polarised filamentary structures stretching over tens of parsecs. There are also many questions that scientists have about this area, regarding the physical structure and how it evolved over time. So let's talk about the importance of this molecule and why we might find it exactly here. Assuming that galaxy arms are composed of Birkeland currents that feed into the central area of the Milky Way, then it would stand to reason that this then also contains material at a much higher density. What is not clear is how these Birkeland currents come together and how they then feed back out. When we examine Eric Lerner's plasmoid model, he quoted a piece of work that showed a galaxy where they were able to identify force-free aligned filaments that curved away from the plane of rotation. These clouds show a high degree of filamentation, although in some surveys, this seems to be more chaotic than others. If all the Birkeland currents do indeed come together here, then you would expect it to look more chaotic depending on the scale that you observe it at. So where does this molecule come from? If we assume that stars are responsible for the majority of the creation of the elements through transmutation, as we have seen with sapphire, then we would expect this material to eventually be output along the solar winds further out into the inner parts of the Birkeland current. From here, it would start a slow journey back to the centre. If all the currents lead to the centre, 
then is it any surprise that we find it here in the first place? There are also large star forming regions here which may also be responsible for the creation of this more locally. But herein also lies a big question. What drives the flow of the current within the galaxy? We see most galaxies have a central brighter zone where they suspect a black hole sits. In the plasma universe this could well be a plasmoid just as Eric Lerner described. In this model the material in the central zone would be feeding in to power that plasmoid. The plasmoid then outputs material from the poles and maybe these are then connected via an Alvanesque circuit back round to the spiral arms. And this is certainly the picture that Eric Lerner presents. If on the other hand all galaxies are strung out on filaments, the question then becomes how exactly are these connected and does this connection play a role in this driving process? Do galaxies have an equivalent heliopause separating them from the intergalactic medium? That certainly seems to be something that we are observing. Would a similar process drive material into the poles or does it connect to the disk? How does this work with a plasmoid? Now this is most certainly something that is worth exploring in a lot more detail in the near future. One final thought is that this material in the central zone seems to contain all the building blocks required to create life. We also know that some parts of these gas clouds have to be ionized and from looking at Eugene's work on the ultra deep biosphere we also appreciate how hardy microbial life can be. If only we could detect the absorption and the emission spectra of life itself. Would we detect vast clouds of microbes in this central zone? As always, be brave, be curious, the truth is waiting for us. Until next time.